Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. My last day on vacation down here in Orlando, Florida. I've been enjoying some R&R with my family, and I know my wife definitely needed it after the year and a half or so that she has had. And I uh, had a good time with the kids down here, visited a lot of the Florida area that I have been working in during hurricanes over the past 20 to 25 years. So we kind of did our own little hurricane highway tour, if you will. But it's time to talk to talk to you about the tropics. We're going to end the month of July pretty quiet overall. So that's the theme or the headline, if you will, for today, July 26, 2021. Wow, July is almost over. So this headline here from Twitter out of National Weather Service, Newport, Moorhead City, really says it all. I could do the whole update with this and just make it a couple minutes long, but there's a few other things I want to tell you about, so we'll extend it a little bit, especially since it is Monday and we can look at broader topics. But first, the current events, if you will. Window of opportunity is quickly closing for anything to develop out of 90L. Nice little satellite picture if the hotel Wi-Fi here will cooperate. It's not, so forget it. It tried to pop up there. I've got an animation loaded, so we'll just go with that. But the bottom line here is this little tweet. That's the main thing. 20% chance now for this to develop. It's unlikely going to become a tropical system. It's a tropical low, but it doesn't have a lot of deep organized convection associated with it. And as such, it's been downgraded to 20% chance it's just off the coast there. I'll show you a nice radar image in just a minute. First, a wide visible animation, and you can see the system right here off the coast of northern Florida, southeast Georgia. Very limited convection with it at all, and lots of dry air out here in the tropical Atlantic intertropical convergent zone kind of squashed to the south. Um, we've had a lot of rain and thunderstorms down in the Virgin Islands. Our good buddy Brent down there getting some lightning pictures yesterday. He was rocking and rolling. He had a tropical wave that moved through and this Tutlo, T-U-T-T, -T, tropical upper tropospheric trough. Just a very unfavorable pattern. You've got this troughing in the mid-levels instead of ridging and in the upper levels as well. So there's a lot of sinking air, a lot of dry air, and this area is just not favorable at all. So we'll just put a big X out here. We will close out the month of July without any other things to worry about, almost certainly. A little bit of spin and activity in the eastern Pacific. That is where the rising motion extends from the West Pack into the eastern Pacific. And we're probably going to see another storm or two develop there. And then when we get into August, it looks like things will start to become busy in the Atlantic, especially later in the month of August. Let's zoom in on this real quick. And you can see the area of vorticity associated with 90L. It's got a nice spin to it, good tropical low. It's, you know, the skeleton is there, but it didn't have enough upper level support and there were other factors involved, just kind of squashing it and keeping it down. And so it's just a minimal uh, nuisance to mariners and anybody traveling that might get underneath any of these thunderstorms right here. Very nice radar loop, courtesy of Mark Nissenbaum over at Florida State University. Clearly, you can see the counterclockwise rotation over land, some of these showers and thunderstorms, they can be heavy. And if you're driving through those along the I-95 or US-17 corridors or any of the secondary roads, these can be rather, you know, frightening, if you will. Unnerving is a better way to put it when you get these really heavy downpours. So if you've got radar scope, that's what I use, or any other radar app, um, and you're traveling, this is a very handy thing to look at is the radar because you can see when you're going to encounter one of these heavy cells and uh, when you do they're brief but they can create a lot of ponding on the road and you've got to slow down out there this is an impact okay there's something with this this tropical low if somebody has a big pile up or a big wreck or even if it's just a small wreck you know with a couple of cars and there are injuries or worse fatalities that's a big problem and it's totally preventable you got to just be aware and you got to slow down and take your time out there. Really neat to see though, it's good when these are not all wound up and causing major problems. Nice little counterclockwise rotation there. Modern technology of the radar allowing us to see that very clearly. So what's going to happen with this? Well, it's going to kind of drift around here. I'll show you on the GFS in just a little bit. In fact, kind of got my 
tabs somewhat out of order. I was going to show you the modeling later, but let's just get it done now. There's the system right there in the vorticity field at 850 millibars, or about 5,000 feet up. In the GFS model from 12Z today, that's about 8 a.m. Eastern time this morning. And so let's see what happens to it. And I'll just draw a box around this area because this is what I want you to focus on. Everything else is just lights out, nothing happening. So watch what happens over the next day or two. It mills around down there, tries to amplify a little bit. So it's going to bring some heavy rain to the low country. And then it comes up to north. In fact, I'll be heading home and all of that tomorrow into... Uh, late tomorrow night, so that'll be fun. You know, look at that. Go back a little bit there. Um, I have to practice what I preach and make sure when my wife and I are driving the precious kids' cargo back, right? We got to be careful because that's right along our route uh, on I-95 there. But yeah, that little impulse down there will bring some heavy rains, and then it moves off of Cape Fear, Myrtle Beach area, and vicinity, and then just kind of hangs out before finally getting absorbed in this energy here of this little shortwave trough coming out of southeast Canada and then off into the Atlantic it goes. We're now out to day five and there's nothing brewing in the tropics. This takes us to July 31st and it's nice and quiet out there. No impulses out here that you can see coming together. One little system maybe by day five in the southeastern Pacific. We'll take a look at that real quick and we'll scooch this out into time. One disturbance way out here, southwest of the Baja, already over more uh, a more stable atmosphere and environment, if you will, and so it's not going to really develop much. But another system tries to curl up there, as you can see, by about day five in the eastern Pacific, and then it moves on out. Kind of winds up pretty good there, a small tropical cyclone. We're out at about a week now, so that's as far as we need to really be looking. But, you know, kind of rewind the clock a little bit, show you what's happening. No threats to Mexico that I can see. So it looks like July will end on a pretty positive note. All right, so moving on to other topics in the tropics. Um, this is really important. The SOI, the Southern Oscillation Index. I show you this once in a while, especially during the off-season, because it helps us to kind of gauge what might be coming up in terms of what's going on with the ENSO, E-N-S-O, the state of the El Nino Southern Oscillation Phenomenon. And recently, this index has really been skyrocketing. The 30-day average now is at 15. Normally, the Bureau of Meteorology says that any number at plus 7 or higher is typical La Nina thresholds. And the 90-day average is now up to almost 7 at a pretty healthy 6.57 and the contributor for today you know a little over 14 and a half points how is this derived it's from the pressure differences between Tahiti which was 1016.52 and Darwin so the pressure lower over in Darwin than Tahiti and so the net flow of air and this is a major oversimplification it means that the general flow of air is more east to west the trades are strong and you can see the SOI on the graph here, up, 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 up. All of this right here is very important for what I'm going to show you next. These numbers really going up rapidly has indicated a change in the base state. And look what's happening. We're getting back towards that La Nina in the eastern Pacific, the central Pacific as well. These beautiful transverse waves that you get out here. Um, a really neat phenomenon, just the way the currents go through. Kind of like the atmosphere, you get waves in the atmosphere you get, and you get waves in the ocean, literal waves that you can see. And then these are these temperature gradient waves that are really fascinating as the way the currents move out there. And boy, we are really, really heading towards the La Nina again. And on the flip side, look at the Gulf warming back up now, almost the entire Gulf at or above average, even if it's just a little bit. Most of the deep tropical Atlantic now above average and the Northwest Atlantic above average. Things are starting to tip back into the favor of a very active look to the Atlantic hurricane season. It's kind of like just the real quick sports analogy that you've got a very loaded team, you know, whether it's uh, football, basketball, baseball, whatever the case may be. And you're expecting because of that loaded team that there will be progress made, a very successful season. And I'm just trying to get you to understand this here. It doesn't guarantee 
that that team will win the national championship or win all the games or whatever. You understand? So even though all of this is there, you know, everything can be set. The table can be set, so to speak. But if nobody comes to dine, then so be it, right? So the tropics look primed. And it's only, this is always a day behind, but it's only late July. We still have a month to go, a full 30 days, before I would expect to start seeing a quick increase in activity. So imagine where we're going to be. In fact, I'm going to make a note and I'm going to make a folder on my computer right now. Let's save this graphic right here and revisit it in about three weeks once we get into the mid part of August. All right. And let's see where things are. I'll make sure I do that. But this is a, a very interesting look and it all starts. This SOI is part of it. Very interesting, very fascinating. And here's the reality. Here's the actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. Look at all this area, 30 degrees Celsius or higher now. I was down here in the Keys for a couple of the days of our vacation, and holy cow. I mean, it was hot. I mean, it was like Arizona hot with humidity. No, not 115 or whatever. I get it, but it was really hot. I've been to the Keys a few times in my life. And I don't recall that it was ever that hot down there. That's just me. I'm not saying, oh, it's, you know, we're on some collision course and everything's going to catch on fire. It's just I felt toasty. It was very, very hot down there. Look at this, 31 Celsius. And we're getting into the upper 80s. But anyway, all this 30 Celsius water through here, there's 30 Celsius building in the west central Gulf. And you can see the anomalies there match up very nicely. Everything is just slightly warmer, maybe even a little bit more so than slightly over here. Bottom line, though, Atlantic is warming, Pacific is cooling, and we still have a month to go before the peak of the season starts to arrive. Back in my neck of the woods, my hometown of Wilmington and the local beaches around there, water temperatures offshore about 27 Celsius or about 81 Fahrenheit, 82 out in the Gulf Stream. Still chilly for, for my tastes up in the... Uh, Northeast part of the country, the Mid-Atlantic, the Gulf of Maine is always cold. But again, we still have some time to go and peak heating of the oceans has not happened just yet. All right, so just a reminder, we are funded through our great family of people on Patreon, a wonderful community there, over 650 strong. If you're interested in learning what we do with that, check it out at patreon.com slash hurricane track. I am also on Twitter, right there, and Facebook. We don't do as much with Facebook as we do Twitter and YouTube, but it's out there, so, you know, we do what we can. YouTube has grown a lot over the last few years, that's for sure. I've been on there since 06, but really only started doing a lot with it these last four years. So that's how you connect with us. If you're new to my channel and this video update, there's also a morning podcast called Hurricane Season the Podcast. You just search for it on Apple and Spotify and Google Podcast, Hurricane Season, the podcast, and hopefully you can find it. Look for that logo there. It's easy to see and spot. Same one that's on the old t-shirt here. All right, that is it for me down here in Orlando where it's hot today. Um, boy, it's just hot everywhere. It's, that's the way it should be in July. I'm not complaining. I kind of like the heat, so there's that. All right, so let me shut up and get this online for you guys. Have a great rest of your Monday. I'm traveling tomorrow, so no update. But then I'll be back Wednesday in the office in Wilmington, North Carolina, and we'll see what July you know, brings in terms of as we close it out and what, what August looks like ahead. Look at some graphics and things from Ben Knoll, maybe Eric Webb, see what he's been working on, and we will go from there. All right, I'm Mark Sutter. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again on Wednesday.